You also met Timothy Leary, if I'm not mistaken, yes. and had an uh, interesting experience with him. Do, well, do you want to I, talk about that? Yes. I went to the American Psychological Association when Tim was giving a lecture on psilocybin because at that time he was doing very legitimate research and was getting pure psilocybin from the Sandoz Company in Switzerland. And he was on a panel, if I remember correctly, with Gerald Hurd and William Burroughs and I decided right then and there that I was going to try to take it myself, mm. see what all the excitement was about. And how old were you at this point? Oh, I was at that time at Kent State University. That was back in the early 1960s. So you were in graduate school? No, I was out of graduate school. Oh, you were teaching at I Kent was State? Teaching. Uh -huh. And so I wrote to him and he invited me to be a research participant and I had a personal interview with him and he said you're just the type of person that we would like to be a participant in the studies and I'll schedule something tomorrow night but in the meantime I'm going to invite you to a dinner party I'm having for Alan Watts well Alan Watts of course was a great hero of mine and eventually I got to know Alan Watts very very well and actually spent more time with him than I spent with Timothy Leary and could see where they diverged and disagreed on a number of things. Alan Watts was of the frame of mind that these experiences should be very carefully regulated and could be best handled by what you might call an intellectual and artistic elite. Well, Timothy Leary sort of went off the deep end and said, turn on, tune in, and drop out. He thought they could change society. Right. He wanted them, like, available to the masses. Yes. And did, did Alan Watts and Aldous Huxley, uh, did they know each other? Because yes, I know Huxley, Huxley shared Huxley that view. the same way. Yeah. I never got to meet Aldous Huxley, but I did become friends with Laura Huxley, his second wife. Right. A wonderful woman, and she uh, was of the same state of mind. In fact, she gave Aldous Huxley um, LSD as he was dying so that he could have a very, very beautiful death. Yeah, yeah. That was in, that was the day Kennedy was shot, right? Yes, yes, yes. He and Kennedy died the same day. Hmm. So you were talking about, uh, you went to the dinner party then uh, with uh, Leary the night before you were scheduled to do Yes, your... and I heard Alan Watts and something. At, at, he was, of course, marvelous. He was a great entertainer. And now there is a new book co-edited by one of my former Saybrook students. Um, Alan Watts Here and Now. It's a collection of articles about Alan Watts and I think his importance in philosophy and psychology and in Eastern studies has finally been recognized. Indeed, he is and was a very, very pivotal person. But I ate something at that dinner party that had some toxic element in it because I was up the whole night heaving, going to the bathroom, and the next morning my friend at Harvard, who I was staying with, who was supposed to take psilocybin with me, said, I don't think you're in any mood to take psilocybin tonight. Hmm. And I said, I will struggle through somehow. <laughs> so we were going to have an orientation session with Tim's research assistants, and I had my friend Steve literally drag me to the room half an hour early so I could sit down and be oriented and be prepared by Alan and Sarah, our two guides, and as soon as they left the room, I ran to the bathroom and threw up. And my friend Steve said, I don't see how you're going to do it tonight. I said, just get me there. So we got to the apartment where we were to take psilocybin, and Timothy Leary showed up with his psilocybin and gave it to us. Then he had to leave. He had an appointment with the local police. Oh. Yes, yes, things are sort of beginning to fall apart. Well, 
half an hour after I took psilocybin, all vestiges of my indigestion and diarrhea disappeared. Hmm. And I had a simply marvelous trip and have written it up in an article called Music to Eat Mushrooms By, which has been reprinted time and time again in various anthologies. But the only tragic thing about that trip, this was in the early 1960s, was that I had an image of Abraham Lincoln with a pistol smoking at the base of his head it was a silhouette, and somebody has said the president has been shot. And then Lincoln morphed into Kennedy, and again, his head was bowed, and somebody shouted out, the president has been shot. Well, I wrote that up in the account of the trip that I sent to many, many people, and unfortunately, a year later, that indeed did come to pass. Wow. That's a ver very memorable that was your first experience. You've had uh, many subsequent experiences with... Yeah, not uh, a lot. A couple of dozen, perhaps, with uh, uh, various psychedelic agents. Yeah. And did you... How did you view them? Some people view those experiences as educational, others as recreational. Where would you classify uh, experiences with hallucinogens? Well, I learned something from each of them, and... I think learn is not quite the right word. I would say it reinforced things I already knew. Uh, again, because I'd read a lot of Alan Watts's books and I'd read a lot of philosophy, I'd read a lot about Native Americans, and so I already had a worldview which was quite different than the general American worldview that's emphasis on materialism and possessions and competition and rivalry. And so the psychedelic experiences with peyote, with LSD, with ayahuasca, each taught me something and sort of reinforced and reemphasized what I already knew, but often put it in a different context, something that I could put to use. So for me, the experience was basically an educational one. It was spiritual in the sense that I became uh, closer to the earth, valued relationships more, valued love and kindness more. And in terms of recreational, I wouldn't have uh, really thought of taking anything like that for recreational purposes because if anything is sacred to me, it's special experiences like this that um, you do not violate. You do not treat casually. There is some way for you to learn from them to develop spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, and ethically from.